Good morning, Community Life Church. We are so glad you're joining us this morning. In fact, we're exceedingly glad that you are joining us this morning. We want to invite you to, to not be an, an observer, but we want you to join us. And as we're worshiping, man, if you're in your living room, wherever you are, man, just lift your hands, stand, you can kneel. Whatever you're doing, would you just turn it into a place of praise, a place of worship as we are here. And we're believing that God that is here is there as well. Amen and amen. Let me just pray. Father, we love you. We yes. thank you. Bless those who are joining us this morning. Almighty God, minister to them and strengthen their right hand and their left hand that they would be mighty, mighty warriors for you. To you be the glory as we worship you and glorify you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes. What
the source of all round dry Oh, I came here and I found light Everything else will fade away But you are the fountain that sustains And I want to Father, we just take this moment right now to just breathe deeply, to just be here in this moment in your presence. Father, where two or more are gathered, whether in physical presence or whether, whether through this new medium, whatever way we are gathering as a community, Father, we know, Holy Spirit, that you will be in that place with us. So, Father, thank you thank you that you've come this morning to meet with us. Yes. You've come into this place to minister to our hearts. Father, we thank you for your presence. And Father, we ask that right now, as we, as we receive the word that you have prepared for us for this morning, Father, that you would just allow us to, to just be here in your presence, to breathe deeply of your presence in this place. And Father, that you would just that you would just begin to just bring refreshment to yes. our spirit, Father. Yes. That the living water that you have this morning would just pour down from heaven Ooh. and be in this place with yes. us and refresh us in this time. Yes. Refresh us in yes. our need. Refresh us when we're thirsty. Yes. So Jesus, come and meet with us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Wow. Good morning, church. Man, I just wish right from where you're at right now, just give a shout of praise for that worship. Lord, yes. just glorify you. Wow. He is here with us. I want you to say that to yourself. He is here with us. Whether you're with, yes. whether you're with two or three people or whether you're by yourself, he is here with us. And as we transition now to a word of encouragement, uh, I just want to invite you to grab your Bible, grab something to write with, because we're going to take a few notes today. Uh, my name is Zeb Haggerty. I'm the Connect Team Leader, and uh, I'm honored to bring a word of encouragement to you today. And I just want to invite you to continue your worship, even now, as the Word ministers to you. We're going to be reading out of the book of Philippians. What I love about Philippians is that some say it's the most joyful book written in the Bible. And when you look at the context in which it was written, you would say to yourself, how is this the happiest book in the Bible? I mean, Paul is writing to the church from a Roman prison. And I don't even think we can really wrap our brains around that. But he's writing from a Roman prison. He's about to go on trial for doing what he was called to do. He's going on trial because he preached the gospel. And for all he knows and for all the church knows and for all those who have been following Paul's life, that's it. He's going to go to trial and he may never come out of that trial. He's most likely leading to death. And he's writing to a church and he's encouraging them. Come on. I, I, I just, in this time and what's going on in our lives right now, to know that I can be going through deep sorrow, uh, complete unknown, and yet encourage others. And that's what this letter to the Philippians is all about. And we're going to pick it up in chapter 4. It's a very uh, familiar uh, point of scripture. And I'd like to look at it. I think we can pull three things from it today that are going to help us as we continue on in the weeks to come. So we're going to read it and then we're going to talk about it. It's Philippians 4. And I'm going to start in verse 4. And it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Now remember, as we're reading through this, he's in a Roman prison, possibly going to his death. And he's writing to a church. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God. Come on, somebody. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Lord, as we enter into your word today, Lord, let it completely engulf us and minister to us. We declare it in faith. It will happen. In Jesus' name. Amen. So the first thing that I want us to pull from this text is the contrast between anxiety and prayer. Because right now, the first word I want you to write down in your notes is the word choice. Paul is presenting to us a choice. He's saying, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition. There's our two choices. I can be anxious, okay, and let's pick out that word real quick. Anxious means double-minded. That's all, that's all it is that, that we, he's talking about here. Double-minded. I can know the truth about God, but yet look at my circumstances and my situations, and, and I have a choice even there. What do I do? Which one do I believe? Which one is more relevant to me? And it's echoing the words of Jesus that said, don't worry about tomorrow. See, anxiety is caused when we try to control things we have no control over. What's going to happen with my job? What's going to happen with the economy? What's going to happen with the medical system? What's going to happen with all these things? What about the health of so? All these things I have no control over. But in this moment, Paul is saying, don't be anxious about anything. Instead, through prayer and petition. That word petition is also, uh, it, it, all it's saying is to be going to God with something that I need. I'm actually fervently going to God in my prayer saying I need something. So our choice is between being anxious about things I can't control or praying about things I can't control. Is that good? Because that's our choice before us. The second thing that I want us to see is our posture that he's asking us to be in. So don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanks 
giving. There's your posture. So in anxiety, as Pastor talked about a few weeks ago, he talked about how fear is going to steal away where, 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 where it is the power that I have to overcome everything. Anxiety is going to create fear inside of me. And fear is going to rob me of the thanksgiving of the things that I know I should be thankful for. I even encourage you right now, even in your notes when we're all done here, this section of your notes where you just wrote down your posture and that posture is thanksgiving, start to write down things that you're thankful for. Come on, even if you're not certain, you can be absolute about the things that God says you should be thankful for. Are you in Christ Jesus? Then you are raised to high places. You are seated at the right hand of the Father in Christ Jesus. You are adopted into the kingdom of heaven. You're adopted sons and daughters of the Most High. You could boldly come to the throne and pray your needs to God. That alone is enough to be thankful for. But I'm sure when you start to think about it, you've got lots of things to be thankful for. You've got a home. You've got, you've got a body of people around you. I hope that over the last few weeks and in the weeks to come, you're going to continue reaching out to those around you and people are reaching out. And this is more of a time, more of a time. This is not a time. Last week, Pastor talked about how we dwell. Well, we can dwell in our own buildings. We can dwell in our own homes, but we can still stay connected to all the people around us. I can be thankful that I've got a body that's around me that is praying alongside with me for what it is that God's going to do. We can be thankful for what it is. And when you're thankful, fear goes away. Do you believe that? Come on, say amen. Fear goes away when I am thankful. And the last thing that I want us to see here is the result. The result of making the right choice to pray and bring my requests to God, to have a posture of thanksgiving. The result is, in verse 7, and the peace of God. Not the peace of the world, not the peace of what your friend down the street can give you, not even the peace that a sound income can bring you or a steady job can bring you or, or even the love of a loved one or family member. Not even that type of peace. This is the peace of of God, which transcends all understanding. See, it's when we're anxious about things that we don't know and how it's going to come about, we begin to wonder and we trail off into the what ifs and how could this be and I'm not sure and I start to lose my focus on being thankful. That is where the peace is gone and I can even begin to look at, well, how could God bring peace from this? How could God restore me in this? How could God make good come from this? No, 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 stop. Stop trying to reason with truth because God says that his peace it surpasses your ability to understand it, but it's yours, and it's yours when we're thankful for it. You can be thankful for that peace, and it's the result of keeping your focus in the right place. That peace that transcends all understanding, and here it is, church, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. I want you to pick up, up on that word, guard. On your last section here, where we're seeing under result, I want you to pick up that word, the peace of God will guard your heart. Listen, God's not here to remove all the evil in the world from our situations. He is here to guard us from it so that we can be empowered through it to touch the lives of others around us. We are on display, church. I'll come and call it what it is. We are on display. People are looking for hope in a dark world, and I suggest that we're going to be that city on the hill, that we're going to stand form, we're going to stand strong in the word of God. We are going to stand firm in the truth of who he says we are. We are elevated to high places in Christ Jesus. We are overcomers. I mean, the word says we're more than overcomers, right? So we're overcomers of these things around us. We are going to be conquerors of the, of, of the evil and, and, and the darkness in the world around us. And I want you to know that your heart and your minds are going to be guarded by his peace. And that is why even with all the stuff around you, what I'm trying to say is this. By having this peace does not make the storm go away. It doesn't. But it guards you from its ability to rob you of that peace. And I invite you into believing that today. To believe that as we make the choice to go to God in prayer with thanksgiving in our hearts, even though the storms surround you, the waves are crashing all around you, the economy is doing whatever it's doing, my job is doing whatever it's doing, all these things that you're seeing on the news are going on around you, you have a peace that transcends all understanding and you will be encouragement 
to those around you. Will you pray with me? Father God, so thankful, Father. I'm so thankful that you have never left us, you never will, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Father, you will never forsake us. We're so thankful, Father, that we have your spirit to guide us through these times. We're so thankful, Father God, that you are our peace within the storm. Lord, I'm so thankful that you're building up your body to be encouragers, Lord, to, to see the world from your eyes and from your eyes alone, Lord, Father. I pray that this word encourages us. I pray that it emboldens us to pray to you, Lord, to lay down our worries and concerns and to look to you, the author and perfecter of our faith. Lord, as we go about our days, Lord, let us look for opportunity to serve others around us, for we have what the world needs, and that is hope. And we thank you for that hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I hope you have a great week. Stay tuned. Keep plugging in. Stay connected. Keep seeing us on Facebook for more resources. We love you. Have a great week.